people, 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 people. Que pasa, sapa, say what they do. Now the first thing that is popping in the news is an update about a BPO. We are speaking about a call center that is in Portmore. We are speaking about a place that is called, or a business establishment that is called Alarica. Now about a day ago, I did a report or a video and I said that one person contracted the big C we are speaking about on Friday. And based on information from the employees, they are saying, they are claiming, they are alleging that the operators of this facility is not following. They are not observing. They are not obeying the protocol as it pertains to distancing. We are speaking about social distancing because they are claiming that at least 50 persons are in one building we are talking about one room at a time and people if you understand how these um bpo or call centers operate we are speaking about workers we are speaking about employees in some cubicle so we are speaking about a lot of persons that are working in a very close proximity we are talking about one liquor space so anyways after friday when one person was tested positive for the big c we saw that the ministry of health they stepped in and they put a temporary closure upon the place however based on the information from the employees it is said that they were getting email from the operators of this establishment and they were claiming that they are going to reopen they are going to sanitize the place and they are going to reopen within a week however since that time we are speaking about on monday our next person has tested positive so people we are talking about two people in our one establishment one little business one little building some people you know that that is problematic because of the fact that it is said that this place employs over 500 persons and at least 50 or 60 persons are working in one liquor room so people based on the information from the ministry of health we are speaking about dr christopher tufton he said that they have tested at least 60 persons and they are awaiting the results now people based on what we've seen we are speaking about on friday one person and then again on monday and next person so just based on that, we can come to a logical conclusion that out of those 60 persons that were tested, at least a few more of them are going to come up positive, point blank and period. So just based on the fact that one employee tested positive on Friday and then a next employee tested positive on Monday, we see that the Ministry of Health and specifically the Health Minister, we are talking about Dr. Christopher Tufton, he is implementing stricter and more stringent rules and law as it pertains to the Social Distancing Act and also the Disaster Risk Management Act. So people, the moral of the story is this. We see that when these foreign companies, we are speaking about these foreign entities, they come to Jamaica and them set up shop. They don't want to obey the rules, laws and regulation. They think that they are above the rules and the law because they're coming with a bag of money. And people, we see that it seems that the government Government of Jamaica has been bowing lately. However, we see so them realize that this thing we are talking about the big C, it is very serious. So the point that I'm trying to make is that the government of Jamaica and more specifically the Ministry of Health in this case, they cannot afford to be penny wise and pound foolish. And not because these foreign companies, they are coming to Jamaica and building some pretty building and they are also employing a whole bunch of persons at some minimum wage. We cannot allow the money, we cannot be tricked or fooled for the money to the detriment of the wealth and the health of persons living in Jamaica. We are talking about the citizens of Jamaica point blank and period so anyways people that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say it is just my views and opinion it is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up so the next thing that is popping in the news is an update as it pertains to the 43 jamaican crew members on the mariel discovery tour we are talking about the cruise ship now the government of Jamaica has responded and specifically the Ministry of Health, we are speaking about the Port Authority and also the Ministry of Health. And they are saying that on April and or about April 2nd, 2020, this ship, we are speaking about this cruise ship, they basically dock at a place called California Bluff and we are speaking about a place that is about 13 miles south of Port Royal. So in actuality, they did not actually dock, we are speaking about in Kingston. 
So in other words, they made a stop to refuel the ship. However, based on what the government is saying, they said that the captain of that ship, we are speaking about the Mariel Discovery 2, he made a decision to withdraw the request of those members before a decision that was pending was made. So my point is this, it seems like he was in some sort of haste and we see that the government of Jamaica is getting blamed for something that they are not guilty of, point blank and period. Now, based on what has been out there on social media, we see that the government of Jamaica is getting a bashing because people are claiming, people are alleging that they are wicked and that they are not taking back their people off the ship. But people, the truth and the facts that the government of Jamaica responded to the captain of the ship and the agent of the ship. And they said that because of the protocol, because of the new rules, as it pertains to the big sea, they have to seek an exemption. However, that exemption is going to take a little time. We are speaking about maybe a couple of days. However, like I said, it seems like the captain and the agent, they were in a rush. So anyways, the government of Jamaica said that they needed an exemption. So therefore, it is going to be a process because they would have to find places for basically put these 53 people. We are speaking about a quarantine center and also they have to make sure that other logistics were in place. So people, we are speaking about a process and we have to understand that this is the protocol. This is the rule everywhere all over the world, not just Jamaica. It is not specific to Jamaica or it is not isolated to Jamaica because it showed and the fact that we have to make sure that we are safe it is safety first so people it showed and the fact that these 53 persons had to be vetted so just based on what the Ministry of Health and the Port Authority is saying, they said that they requested some temperature check and they also requested some report as it pertains to anybody on this cruise ship having any sort of big C. We are talking about the COVID rate, lay, lay, blow, blah, bling. So therefore, they did not get that information. So therefore, the captain of the ship, he made a decision, he made a determination that he is going to withdraw, we are speaking about the exemption, and withdraw the request based on the fact that he was not sure, it was not guaranteed that the exemption would be accepted. So people, he made a decision, not based on what the government of Jamaica did, he made a decision that seems like some sort of monetary decision because it seems like he was impatient. Because like me say, the ship was said to have come in on April 2nd and they left on april 3rd we are speaking about 24 hours after so therefore the government of jamaica could not have made any sort of decision or made any sort of exemption within that time so people will say that this is a big misunderstanding and the truth and the fact that the government of jamaica and specifically the ministry of health the port authorities they are getting blamed wrongfully point blank and period so people, like I've said, the government of Jamaica is getting bashed wrongfully because people are blaming them. And based on this incident, the government of Jamaica is saying that they are considering protocol to admit control re-entry of Jamaicans. We are speaking about pending the reopening of the border. We are talking about seaport and airport. So people, like I've always said, there are always three sides to the story because we saw that the government of Jamaica was getting a bashing on social media, in the media, all over the place. However, there are always three sides to the story. We are speaking about the family of the crew members and we are also speaking about the government of Jamaica and we are also speaking about the truth. So people, let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think that they were wrongfully blamed? Let me know what you think. So anyways people, that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say, it is just my views and opinion. It is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up so the next thing that is popping in the news that we see that eight men were taken into the custody of popo for basically breaking the stay-at-home orders as it pertains to the easter holidays and they were charged after they were found swimming in a beach in Clarendon. We are speaking about yesterday. We are speaking about Easter Monday. And it is said that they were taken into the custody of the Lionel Town Popo and head of the corporate communications unit for the JCF. We are speaking about a person whose name is Stephanie Lindsay. She said that the Popo saw the eight men splashing and dashing in a beach in Clarendon. And based on information that she has, it is said that these eight men they are from Spanish town. So people 
people, them leave all the way from Spanish town and end up in a Clarendon in a beach. We are talking about eight men as splishy splashy. Some people, the point that I'm trying to make is that tell me if there is not something fundamentally wrong with the mentality of these new young men in a Jamaica. It seems like them feel like them can break every rules, laws and regulation. And it seems like they don't respect anything. Them don't respect life. Them don't respect rule. Them don't respect anything. Not at all. Point blank and period. And what is even more disturbing about the whole thing is that a eight men, we are talking about eight men, we are talking about seven men and one woman or six men and two women. I am speaking about eight men that thought that it was a brilliant idea to leave all of them women at them yard. We are talking about for Easter weekend. We are talking about left them family, them picnic, rete, lele, blue, blah, bling. And in a beach, a splishy, splashy. In a speedo with seven other men or eight other men. So anyways, people, the moral of the story is this. It seems like people don't listen. And until it basically reach at them doorstep, we are talking about until them see somebody basically pass over them know, we are talking about a family member or a friend. It seems like they are not going to take it serious. And people, like I've said before, everything is funny until somebody gets hurt or until somebody gets slapped away. Point blank and period. So anyways, people, that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that. And like me say, it is just my views and opinion. It is not the gospel. Your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Bless up.